winter is clearly on its way here in Washington, but I thought I'd take some time and, and take care of a few projects before it gets too cold. As you know, we spent uh, most of the summer traveling around, you know, Canada and Alaska. You know, throughout that trip, the, uh, the RV certainly has, uh, <laughs> has experienced a bit of wear and tear. We know we'd take a little bit of a pounding, you know, on this trip. And I want to talk about what those things are and what, uh, you know, what is definitely showing some wear and tear and, and needing some attention. All right, well, I thought I'd uh, start out here on the inside of the RV and talk about the, the windshield. Uh, but uh, before I get started, I wanted to just mention that I, I did put together uh, a, a page on the website that's all about our Alaska trip. Uh, you can use it kind of as a resource if you're thinking of uh, taking this trip on your own. Just kind of documenting our entire route. There's an interactive map that you can kind of see everywhere we went and where we stayed and, and all of those things, um, as well as a whole bunch of tips and, and things that we used along the way to find campsites and dump stations and road conditions. And hopefully answers all the questions that, that we had going into uh, this whole big adventure to Alaska. There's just so many questions that you need answers to. So go check that out. I'll put a link uh, where you can go find it in the video description. But let's get on to the uh, the windshield. A lot of people ask about uh, rock chips. You know, we're obviously traveling through, you know, rougher roads in some areas uh, heading up into the northern parts of British Columbia and uh, the northern Klondike area and into Alaska where we've got dirt roads, gravel roads, and you know we expected that we were going to definitely get uh, some some hits on the windshield uh, with some rock chips and stuff like that and we did <laughs> i have to say for the first few weeks you know i didn't have anything and we're just kind of trucking through and the roads are fairly good and we did go through some gravelly areas you know i thought i was gonna get out of there unscathed until one day we're on a a section of uh, road construction going through and kind of moving along at about 25, 30 miles an hour. And this little car goes zooming past me and cuts right in front of me with rocks kicking up from his wheels. And sure enough, bang, you know, right in the uh, windshield, I got my first uh, chip. You know, when we stopped uh, that night, you know, at our destination, I went, I was gonna go, um, go repair it. So I, I did pick up and carry a few of those um, rock chip repair kits. So I've done a lot of those before. So I was working on the rock chip, but I also noticed that, you know, when he did that, he kicked up more than one rock and he actually uh, busted the lens on one of my fog lights. Here's that, uh, that fog light that was all busted. Luckily, um, a lot of the, the glass pieces were still inside the light there. So I was able to, to find all of those and, and like a little jigsaw puzzle, kind of put them all together and uh, use some packing tape to kind of hold everything in place. So, you know, on the ride back, we definitely use the fog lights at times. So it's, it's functional, it's working, uh, but yeah, it's time for a replacement. Every time we'd have an oncoming vehicle, you know, I always kind of brace myself. I'd slow down. I'd get to kind of move over to the right, and you know, just kind of wait for that that dick, you know, or something to come flying at you. Most of the time, that did not happen. I did get another rock chip, and then another. There's another one here that I filled. I was kind of running out of resin at this point, so this one's kind of a crappy job. And there's another one. Well, we were in the uh, Kenai Peninsula area and I was looking up in the top part of our windshield and I started to see a, uh, a stress crack. It wasn't a result of one of the chips or anything, but it was just coming from the top edge of the windshield and it was kind of working its way down. I, I pumped as much of that, uh, that resin, you know, from the rock chip repair kits into that crack as possible. And I think I was able to stop it or definitely slow it down. So that's kind of how that set also. So that's uh, the extent of the, of the rock chips in the windshield. It's not a major deal right now. I think uh, they're fine, but I'll definitely probably make an appointment uh, at some point to, uh, to get the windshield replaced, primarily because of the crack. I think that's the biggest 
issue I'm concerned about. So one thing we really uh, became acquainted with on this trip are these things called uh, frost heaves. And you know, we didn't really know what those were uh, heading into this. Uh, you know, we knew there'd be like rough roads and maybe potholes and things like that. But these frost heaves are the worst. Uh, and what those are is that, you know, they're just big dips in the road. Sometimes they're not big, but they're enough. They're short and uh, they really catch you by surprise if you're not ready for them. But they're caused by just uh, thawing and freezing of the road and, and they're constantly repairing these things. For the most part, you can see them coming and you're going somewhat uh, slow and you just kind of go slowly through these really irregular parts of the road. But the problem is that uh, sometimes you don't see them and you think, oh, the road just really smooths out for a while and it just becomes you know, smooth sailing. And you're like, oh good, I'm through all that uh, rough patch. But then, you know, boom, you hit one and it's just nothing you can really do once you're, once you're in it. So it definitely has the, uh, the potential to kind of bounce the rig a little bit. And I think it just knocked part of our, uh, our alignment on our slide outs off. You know, this one, you can see it, it's just a little crooked and it's just off kilter a little bit. I mean, it goes in and out just fine, but it's definitely uh, a little off. You kind of see here towards the top of the slide where it's just a little bit off. And you can see where it used to be, a little bit to the right there, centered on that uh, piece of trim or whatever that's called. And it's just a little off. So if I go to the other side here, you know, it's hanging over just a little bit on this side. With the, uh, with the slide a little, bit, uh, a little bit twisted, what happens also is that it, um, it messes up the alignment on the slide topper itself and it gets a little twisted, a little bit off, and it just moves the, the slide topper around so it's, so it's crooked, which can cause it to tear or you know, it just doesn't work properly. I've never adjusted this one before, but I think I know how to do it. So I'm gonna give it a go and hopefully I can straighten it out. Do a little measurement so on this side here I've got about an inch and three sixteenths or so. Alright on this side we're we're a little bit low. I can see already right here we need to bring this end up a little bit. We're at just about an inch. Okay. Yeah, I can feel that I can move it a little bit, so that's a good sign. Okay, here's my situation. Uh, it looks like uh, this panel here is really difficult to get off. You know, I got all the screws out, but there's some sealant or something just holding it down. So it's going to be a lot of effort to, to remove this panel, which I believe the um, the mounting or the the adjustment bolt is probably under here somewhere. But I can get to the other one on the other side, which is the one I think I need to adjust to raise that back end up just a little bit. So what I'm gonna to try to do first is make the adjustment with that rear one and see if I can get it aligned without having to uh, expose this one and get this panel off. Cause if I don't have to do it, I don't want to. Okay, the adjustment bolt itself is actually right inside here. It's a uh, 9 16 and I'm just gonna Start turning it clockwise. All right, well, let's uh, 
it's definitely better than it was. I really need to remove that other panel that I said was really difficult to get off and get to that other side, the adjustment bolt for that. And I think I can true it up uh, even more so I can get it uh, just right. Mm. Here it is, found it. Back of the black tank here. And there is the adjustment bolt. Take it in and out again. So before we left for Alaska, I got a whole new set of tires and I couldn't be happier with these tires. They did very, very well throughout the whole trip. Now these are uh, Toyo M154s, so I got six of them. I also got a, a spare, uh, haven't had to use it, but you know, t at the time, you know, tires are really hard to come by. I was really lucky to be able to uh, to score seven of these tires, got them mounted, and um, I haven't really seen any real wear on these tires in this trip, which is surprising given, you know, the rougher roads that we've been on. Now, I also installed some new suspension components. I, I put in a, an entirely new front anti-sway bar, and I've talked about some of this already. Um, but yeah, really heavy duty blue uh, super steer anti-sway bar and that's been great, uh, really improved our ride. And also installed uh, some front and rear airbags, which have really been a game changer to, you know, really cushion, you know, our ride and, uh, you know, protect the RV, you know, when we hit all these bumps and potholes and stuff like that. But when I got back, I, uh, I was taking a look at the airbags and what I saw here on the rear really kind of blew my mind. So now that I have the uh, screws out on this, let me uh, crack this open and I'll show you what I saw. All right, so you take a look at these rear airbags. This bracket here on the back, you know, it, it started out straight and now it's kind of bent up a little bit. Um, and it's the same situation on the other side as well. So I was shocked by that. I mean, it's a really thick piece of steel um, that's holding the airbags in there and now it's uh, it's taking a pounding so yeah my, my first reaction when I saw these these brackets on the rear airbags was that I was just blown away that they would actually get bent like that but then I was uh, I was kind of happy and comforted knowing that you know the, that they took the brunt of all that force on the uh, rear end of the the frame and the chassis and you know helped cushion some of those uh, impacts that we had you know coming down on the road like that i guess a lot of that force would have been transferred to the uh to the frame of the rv instead but uh, you know the airbags kind of sacrificed themselves a little bit uh, for the rv so i was happy about that but still you know i was, was kind of shocked that that they would actually bend so i reached out to uh to airlift uh, to see if you know, because they're still under a warranty, um, you know, they warranty the whole thing. And I was surprised that they gave me a lot of pushback. You know, they first came back and said, oh, the, uh, the brackets aren't covered under warranty. Didn't make any sense because they're all part of the same kit. Got the airbags, got the brackets, you can't use one without the other. So yeah, it took a, it took a lot of uh, going back and forth, uh, sending pictures and you know, detailed emails and blah, blah, blah. Eventually, uh, they agreed and say a special situation that, uh, you know, they would go ahead and honor the warranty and sent me some replacement brackets that I will get installed, replace these, and we'll be back in business. Well, I released the uh, bolts from the top of the airbag and disconnected the airline, so going in, <laughs> Gonna remove the bracket. All 
All right, yeah, I forgot this one has all kinds of stuff in the way on the other side, so a little more difficult, but yeah. Get the other side and we'll get it out. Ooh, got it. Okay, here's the bracket I just uh, removed here, and here's the replacement. So the replacement's nice and straight. You can see the 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 one that's slightly bent isn't bent that much. It doesn't seem like it's that much, but it's also kind of curved in here at the back, and it's just enough to make to make a difference and uh, kind of bend that airbag out a little bit and probably make it less effective. So, yeah, if I were to move it like flush on one side. Let's just do this side. You can see how much off it is on the other side. It should be perfectly straight. So I just removed the uh, the plate from the top of the airbag and you can see that there's still some rocks in here from from the road. So you can kind of get an idea of uh, you know, the type and size of rocks that are being launched. Oops. Launched up at, at the car and bouncing around underneath the rig so yeah there you go alaska rocks souvenirs i'm gonna put the new one in and we'll be back in business all right new bracket is in all straight and yeah we're good to go so overall we're, we're pretty happy with the way that our motorhome handled this trip to Alaska. I mean, we didn't have any mechanical issues or anything that, uh, that concerned us that we needed to deal with. Um, you know, everything worked uh, pretty well. Um, yeah, obviously we did have some wear and tear, some bumps and bruises along the way, and it's just because of the, um, the road conditions primarily. Um, and we got dirty, you know, we got really dirty in a few spots, but we're really happy um, with the way our RV handled it. And I just wanted to give you uh, give you an idea of what you might encounter if you take a really big, heavy motorhome up on this trip. You know, if you had a smaller rig, that's why everybody says you should take a smaller rig, <laughs> you know, and, and it's going to be uh, more nimble, uh, probably deal with some of these conditions a little bit better. But if you're uh, planning a trip to Alaska and, and you just want more information, you know, I be sure to go check out that map and it's going to talk about routes, things that we did to prepare for the trip and things to uh, to expect, you know, when you're uh, on the route and you're traveling and, you know, things like mosquitoes and wildlife and, um, you know, lots of different questions that we had that uh, tried to be pretty complete about uh, putting all this stuff down, documenting it before we forget. And I hope it helps you out. So take it easy. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments and um, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.